So good morning everyone and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture on classics in total synthesis part 1. So let us continue our discussion on total synthesis of uh, natural products and today we will talk about a very interesting but small alkaloid called epibatidine. As you can see here it is a bicyclic compound having a substituted pyridine attached to the asa bicyclo compound. This compound was isolated uh, from a poisonous frog in Ecuador. Okay. And earlier we all know that uh, strychnine was the most poisonous compound isolated in nature, but epibatidine is uh, more poisonous than strychnine and also it shows analgesic activity at 1 200th dose of morphine as a morphine has been used uh, as an analgesic for long time and this is uh, much more active than morphine. And from synthetic point of view when you look at this molecule it has a 7 asa bicyclo 221 heptane system okay. So, this is the 7 asa bicyclo 221 heptane system with a chloropyridine okay with a chloropyridine attached at the side side okay. So, obviously when this molecule was isolated because of its uh, biological activity people are interested in total synthesis of uh, this particular natural product and in this lecture we will talk about three different strategies to synthesize this molecule. The first one which we will talk is about Regan's total synthesis and what he did was he used two key reactions one Diels-Alder reaction, second a reductive palladium catalyzed heck type coupling reaction to synthesize epi pattern. Okay. And this synthesis is highly stereoselective and they could get only the exo isomer in the end. Of course, this is a racemic synthesis and not a chiral one. So, from the retrosynthetic point of view as you can see this NH should be protected first. So, the NH was protected as a carbamate. So, that was the first retrosynthesis where you add a functional group in the form of a protecting group. Then this can be obtained by a key reaction which I mentioned that reductive heck coupling. So, that means you have a double bond here and a palladium catalyzed reductive heck coupling on this should give your the key intermediate which can be converted into epibatidine in one step. Now, the starting materials the asa bicyclo 221 system is prepared from pyrrole. So, the pyrrole if you treat with the chloromethyl formate you get the diene which on treatment with tocyl acetylene here the triple bond acts as the dienophile. You heat these two and it undergoes a Diels-Alder reaction to form this aza bicyclo 221 system. Okay. So, now it has two double bonds one is electron deficient that is on the right side and other one is electron rich. So, selectively one can reduce the electron rich double bond under standard hydrogenation condition. Now, you do not need this tocyl group isn't it? You do not need this tocyl group. So, this tocyl group can be easily cleaved under sodium amalgam condition. Okay. Still you need the double bond intact because that is required for the reductive heck coupling reaction. So, without touching the double bond the tocyl group was reductively removed under sodium amalgam condition. So, that way the bicyclo 221 aswa bicyclic system was prepared in 3 steps from substituted pyro. Next starting material is the pyridine that is 2 chloro 4 iodo pyridine. So, for that we started with 2 amino pyridine as you know 2 amino pyridine is very easy to make. If you have pyridine using Sichibabin reaction um, you can easily get uh, 2 amino pyridine in large quantity. So, this upon treatment with iodine and acetic acid uh, you can introduce the iodine at 3 position with respect to the nitrogen in the pyridine. Then you can do diacetization and Sanmay reaction to convert 
this amino group convert the amino group at two position to chlorine so now this fragment is also ready already we have prepared the aza bicyclo 221 system what we need to do is only the heck coupling reaction so the heck coupling that is reductive heck coupling work very well so for reductive heck coupling as you know you have to use the formic acid so that is a proton source and that reaction worked very well and it gave exclusively the xy isomer as you know in the natural product this 2 chloropyridine is in x opposition okay so that is one key transformation which is very much required for making the xo isomer okay then what is left is just to remove the protecting group the protecting group was easily removed by treating with hbr and acetic acid to get the natural product and this natural product we batted in was synthesized in racemic form if you look at this synthesis uh, this synthesis was reported in 1993 and there are two key reactions one is intermolecular diels all reaction and then second one is the palladium catalyzed reductive heck coupling reaction okay and this reaction this whole synthesis is convergent because you prepared two different starting materials and then coupled and highly stereoselective where you have seen the formation of only xo isomer during the heck coupling and overall if you look at the yield it is 25.9% in two steps this is significantly very high any total synthesis which gives 25.9 overall yield uh, should be considered as uh, you know excellent synthesis okay so now we will move to the second total synthesis of epipatadine reported by olivo here what is important was a very clever use of biocatalyst to introduce a hydroxyl group okay so nowadays there are many ch activation method to introduce hydroxyl group but those days uh, a biocatalytic approach to introduce a hydroxyl group and followed by attack of uh, two chloropyridine uh, was the key step okay so that was one of the key reactions in the synthesis of epibatidine so from retrosynthetic point of view uh, it was divided into two fragments uh, again it is a convergent strategy so this is the aza bicyclo 221 heptanone system and this is the the lithium species okay so obviously addition of this lithium to this two aza bicyclo 221 system will give the alcohol then if you do dehydration followed by hydrogenation you will get epibatidine so now this ketone was obtained from alcohol by simple oxidation and the key step as i said is the biocatalytic hydroxylation here if you look at this system this is aza bicyclo 221 heptane system okay introducing a hydroxyl group by simple chemical transformation is not that easy whereas here olivo cleverly used biocatalytic method to introduce the hydroxyl group so the starting material was uh, you know uh, Uh, well known hydroxy amino cyclohexane and they are 14 related okay and a modified scott and bowman reaction uh, one can easily you know benzoylate the amino group okay so after benzoylation then you need to convert this hydroxyl group into your leaving group so it was mesylated to get the corresponding mesylate then intramolecular sn2 displacement reaction was done with potassium tertiary butoxide to get the bicyclo 221 system okay here comes the key biocatalytic reaction and this was responsible for the introduction of hydroxyl group here the hydroxyl group as you can see you got was endo alcohol okay now once you introduce the hydroxyl group what you need to do is you have to add the lithio chloropyridine so for that simple oxidation with the tpap that is tetra n propyl ammonium perruthenate as a catalyst and the cooxidant is n methyl morpholine n oxide gave the ketone then you take this iodo chloropyridine and treat with butyl lithium to give the corresponding tertiary alcohol 
So once you have the tertiary alcohol, there are two possibilities. One, you can do the dehydration. Okay, you can do the dehydration and then hydrogenate, or you can do the deoxygenation. Okay, you can do the deoxygenation. So Olivo opted for the second option, that is the deoxygenation. So this is derived from oxalic acid, oxalic acid of ester. Okay, so once he got this ester, then tributyl tin hydrate mediated deoxygenation worked very well. So overall, from here you can see he could deoxygenate using this two-step process. But unfortunately, during this two-step process, he got maximum of endo isomer. Okay, but what you need is exo isomer, isn't it? Exo isomer is the natural product. So he took this mixture and then treated with potassium tertiary butoxide and tertiary butanol. So he could get exclusively the exo isomer. Now. Once you have this exo isomer, what you need to do is to remove this benzyl group. So that was very simple, straightforward. You it's an amide, so you simply treat with 6 normal HCl and heat it at 100 degrees. So the benzyl group was cleaved and it gave the natural product. Again, this natural product, if the synthesis led to the racemic epi battery. And here, if you look at this synthesis. This synthesis was done in 10 steps and from commercially available trans 4 amino cyclohexanol and the overall yield of this total synthesis is about 8%. Still 8% is uh, quite good um, considering the starting materials are commercially available and they are not that expensive. The third synthesis uh, is about uh, Steve Lace. Uh, Steve Lay what he has used in this total synthesis was mostly polymer supported reagents in the whole synthetic scheme. So that is something which is unique except a few reactions, most of the reactions he used polymer supported reagents. Why polymer supported reagents? So when you use polymer supported reagents, the purification becomes very simple. Okay. So then one polymer supported reagent to another polymer supported reagent, one can do it. Now people talk about uh, flow chemistry. This was pre-flow chemistry time where polymer supported reagents played a very important role in synthesis of uh, natural products. And this is one classical example how polymer supported reagents were used in the synthesis of epipatidine and the main advantage is you do not have to purify through chromatography. Okay, just to do the reaction, filter it, remove the solvent, go to the next step. Just to filter and then remove the solvent, go to the next step. So it is very easy if you use polymer supported reagent and because of this uh, purification less synthetic route, polymer supported reagents are uh, well known. So his total synthesis was based on again the intramolecular SN2 reaction as the key step. So you can see here, so this is a nucleophile and this is the leaving group. So intramolecular SN2 reaction will give the bicyclo 2 to 1 system. Okay. Now the difference between this SN2 reaction based total synthesis IP batidine and Oliver's total synthesis is here Steve Lay used a Diels-Sahl reaction between a diene and a dienophile. That way he constructed this cyclohexane ring. Let us see how we did that. Okay. First he started with the, uh, the 2 chloro nicotinic acid chloride and as you can see here this is the polymer support. The acid chloride was reduced with this polymer supported trimethyl ammonium borohydrate region. Okay. So that reduced the acid chloride to primary alcohol. Okay. So once this reaction was done, it is very easy to purify, then oxidize. Again here you use another polymer supported reagent and if you look at this, this is polymer supported perruthenate reagent. Okay, we know what is TPAP, tetra n propyl ammonium perruthenate. So here is another ruthenate reagent which is attached to polymer. Okay, so one can easily oxidize the primary alcohol to aldehyde using this reagent. Now 
you carry out a henry reaction with nitromethane so nitro you take nitromethane and use this base and you do the henry reaction to get the nitro aldol products now you need a double bond that means you have to dehydrate this nitro aldol and for that first you treat with trifluoroacetic anhydride to make it as a trifluoro acetate because that's a good leaving group okay so then you treat with base okay again you could have treated with normal trimethylamine but here you use a polymer substituted tertiary amine polymer substituted tertiary amine which gives the required dienophil that is alpha beta and saturated system here it is alpha beta and saturated nitro cup okay you can call it as nitro alkene once you have this nitro alkene then you do a delsol reaction with the diene having an electron donating group that is enol tbdms and you do this delsol reaction in a cl tube you get this tri substituted cyclohexene okay so here the nitro group and this aryl are trans to each other and you have enol tbdms that can be easily hydrolyzed to get the ketone to proceed further as you know this ketone should be reduced to get alcohol then that alcohol should be made as good leaving group then followed by reduction of the nitro group so these are three steps before you do the intramolecular sn2 substitution to get two aza bicyclo 2 to 1 heptane system okay so you take this ketone and again polymer substituted borohydrate reagent so this is the same reagent which we have seen used for reduction of acid chloride to primary alcohol okay in the first step the same reagent was used to reduce acid chloride to corresponding primary alcohol so here again this reagent was used to reduce the ketone to corresponding alcohol and this is again very stereoselective and you get a maximum only this syn alcohol now the alcohol should be made as good leaving group that means you have to treat with either methyl chloride or tosyl chloride or you have to convert it into halide so here methyl chloride was used and instead of dmap that is dimethyl amino pyridine you can see a polymer substituted a polymer substituted dimethyl amino pyridine was used as a base and the hydroxyl was methylated again the nitro group nitro group was reduced with the uh, borohydride reagent here in addition they also used nickel chloride okay so to selectively reduce the nitro group to get the corresponding amino compound so once you have this amino compound the next step is to carry out an intramolecular sn2 reaction this was done with this sterically crowded uh, base uh, and that worked very well then you have to use this polymer supported primary amine polymer supported primary amine to remove all acidic by products which are formed during this reaction okay so that you don't need purification why the second polymer supported uh, primary amine was used that take care of the acidic impurities formed in this reaction okay so that you will get only the ap battery but unfortunately when they did this reaction they got endo epibattery okay but what we want was exo epibattery so it was easy so again it was treated with potassium tertiary butoxide under microwave condition so the epimerization took place to the exo and once it was formed again it should be treated with a polymer supported sulfonic acid to take care of some basic impurities and followed by treatment with ammonia methanol it gave exclusively the natural product which is exo ap battery and if you look at this whole synthetic sequence it involved 10 steps and started with uh, you know known pyridine uh, nicotinic acid chloride and the key step in this whole synthesis was intermolecular delsol reaction intermolecular delsol reaction between nitro alkene and two substituted butadiene overall the synthesis was achieved with a yield of 32.45% uh, 
and this is uh, really significant uh, considering that 10 steps in this is with 32.45 percent yield is really uh, commendable and more importantly since this is uh, the whole sequence involved many polymer supported reagent the number of chromatography purification was very 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 less so with this uh, i will stop here so about the racemic total synthesis of epibatadine and now we will move to two asymmetric total synthesis of epibatadine in the next few minutes the first asymmetric total synthesis of epibatadine was reported by barium trust group in 1996 so what he has used was he has used a palladium catalyzed cross coupling as well as a desymmetrization as the key reactions to synthesize epibatadine let us see how he has uh, done the retrosynthesis and how he finally accomplished the total synthesis of epibatadine so first retrosynthesis was uh, it's a very simple one that is you know you do uh, an intramolecular SN2 reaction so you make this hydroxyl as a good leaving group uh, followed by intramolecular SN2 reaction and remove the Bach group will give the corresponding epibatadine in optically pure form and this can be obtained from this enone by reducing the double bond first and followed by reducing the ketone to corresponding alcohol and this is where the first key step comes where he has used a still a coupling uh, between this alpha bromo substituted cyclohexenone with the corresponding stannin from the pyridine unit and this alpha bromo substituted cyclohexenone was made from this azide as you know azide can be easily reduced and then protected as NH Bach and the next key reaction was the desymmetrization of this particular compound using a chiral palladium catalyst okay so this uh, trust group has been using in the synthesis of many other natural products so they just extended that methodology to synthesize epibatidine in optically pure form the starting material for this reaction um, that is uh, this dibenzoate was prepared from cyclohexadiene using a photochemical 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction with oxygen followed by treatment with thiourea cleaves the OO bond to get this cis diol with a double bond and both hydroxyl groups were benzoylated using benzyl chloride and base then he did this desymmetrization with this palladium catalyst and this ligand followed by attacking with nucleophile TMS azide to introduce the azide as well as the chirality okay so once we have the azide as you know azide can be easily hydrolyzed using starting a reaction condition and followed by protection as Bach derivative by treating with Bach anhydride then he has to hydrolyze the benzoate and followed by oxidation gave this four substituted cyclohexenone and what is required is to introduce a bromine at alpha position which is required for the stellate coupling so that was done using bromine and triethylamine and this was followed by stellate coupling with this tannyl derivative gave the key precursor okay so what is left is to stereoselectively reduce this double bond as well as reduce the ketone so these two are very critical the double bond which is in conjugation with the ketone so it can be easily reduced with k selectide and then he got a mixture at this carbon so treatment with catalytic amount of dbu so epimerized to get only one isomer now reduction of this ketone with sodium borohydride gave this alcohol okay so once you have this alcohol you convert this alcohol into a good living group uh, by treating with methyl chloride this methylate upon treatment with trifluoroacetic acid first the bark was removed to get the amino alcohol once you have this amino alcohol then reflex with acetonitrile 
it undergoes spontaneous intramolecular SN2 reaction providing minus epibatidine directly. So, TOST could accomplish this uh, first asymmetric total synthesis using two key reactions. One is uh, palladium catalyzed cross coupling reaction that is delay coupling. Second is the palladium catalyzed desymmetrization. Overall, it took about 10 steps and the overall yield was about 13 percent. The second asymmetric total synthesis which we will discuss was reported by Kebayashi's group in 1998. So, what he has used was an asymmetric heterodial salt reaction as the key reaction to construct a bicyclo 2 to 2 system and from there you could go on to make minus epipatidine. So, his retrosynthesis was uh, if you have this bicyclo 2 to 2 system then one can selectively cleave this NO bond. Okay. Once you cleave this NO bond then followed by converting that OH into a good leaving group then an intramolecular SN2 reaction should give the epibatidine. And this can be obtained uh, by reduction of this double bond. Okay. And obviously, once you look at this compound it is a cyclohexene and that can be obtained from this dienophile as well as this diene. Okay. So, that is the idea and let us see how he has done this total synthesis. So, he started with this uh, diene and having a grignard at this carbon. This grignard was uh, then coupled with this iodide. Okay. It is like comoda coupling to get the substituted diene which is required for the intermolecular Dilsal reaction. Then the dienophile, the heterodienophile was in situ generated from this hydroxylamine, okay, substituted hydroxylamine. Okay. This upon oxidation with oxalyl chloride DMSO, that is nothing but Swan condition, you oxidize this NHOH to N double bond O. Okay. So, once you have this N double bond O that can undergo intermolecular Diels-Alt reaction to give these two regioisomers in 3 is to 2 ratio. Okay. So, this is racemic one. So, once he, he was successful in getting this bicyclic adducts, then he wanted to use a chiral auxiliary to see the asymmetric induction. So, the chiral auxiliary which he used was derived from uh, polygon. So, 9 2 naphthyl uh, menthol was used as a chiral auxiliary. You can see that. So, this is the chiral auxiliary 9 2 naphthyl menthol okay, is the chiral auxiliary. This upon treatment with um, yeah, POS gene followed by treatment with uh, hydroxylamine, you get this product. And this upon treatment under Swan conditions will generate N double bond O, which in situ will undergo Diels-Alt reaction with this diene to give three compounds. Okay. One, you can see the regiochemistry of this chloropyridine is on the unwanted side. Then the required one where your chloropyridine is on the right side, but he got about 42 percent yield of the required one. He also got 5 percent yield of the other side chiral auxiliary. You can see where the chiral auxiliary is here. Okay. So, these are the three compounds he got and the major one is the required one. So, he took the major isomer proceeded further. First, he reduced the double bond uh, under hydrogenation condition. So, that is how he could establish the stereochemistry at this carbon. Next is to cleave the NO bond. So, there are many methods to cleave the NO bond. So, he used molybdenum hexacarbonyl to cleave the NO bond, but prior to that he has to cleave or remove the chiral auxiliary. Okay. So, the chiral auxiliary was removed using lithium amine borane and when you remove the chiral auxiliary this carbonyl group also comes out and that free NH was protected as N bond. Okay. So, now the NO bond was cleaved using molybdenum hexacarbonyl to get the corresponding amino alcohol where the amine was protected as bock derivative. 
Now for the intramolecular SN2 reaction to take place, first of all this stereocenter should get inverted, okay, the chlorine should be alpha or bromine, whatever the leaving group should be alpha, then only intramolecular SN2 reaction will take place. So what he did, he converted that alcohol into bromide by treating with triphenylphosphine and CBr4, so which underwent an SN2 reaction to form bromide at this position. Okay. Then trifluoracetic acid removed the bog to get the amine alcohol. As you know, once you have this amine and then bromide, you can reflex with acetonitrile or chloroform and which automatically undergoes intramolecular SN2 reaction to give epipatin. So to summarize, uh, Kibayashi has reported an asymmetric total synthesis involving an intermolecular asymmetric heterol yield cell reaction as the key step. Then the number of steps involved in this total synthesis was 9 and the yield of this whole scheme was about 3.6%. Okay. So with this uh, we completed the total synthesis of uh, epibatadine and now we will move to total synthesis of two more alkaloids before we look into total synthesis of steroids. Okay. Thank you.